What do you think of when you hear someone talking about the Republican Party? Is it positive or is it negative? Well, some polls have suggested the GOP has an image problem, and here in Connecticut, the women of the party are taking steps to try to change that. We're joined now by State Representative Thomas Clarity of Derby and Representative Gail Laville of Wilton. Laviel, I'm sorry. I knew I was going to mess it up. Very good. Ah, right, Laviel, Laviel. Well. Remember that name, Laviel. <laughs> Thanks to both of you for being here. And I'm wondering what you think people's perception is. Which, what's your worst fear of what their perception is when they think of the Republican Party? Well, sometimes I think that they're, uh, they have a notion that uh, some of the social issues that are advocated by the National Party get in the way of their actually... Uh, considering our positions in Connecticut on fiscal issues and things like education and so on, um, they, as a viable alternative, mm -hmm. they, they let some social issues stand in the way instead of realizing that often uh, many of us consider that government doesn't have any business in people's personal lives. So when they have that, when keeping in mind that that might be their perception, how do you convince them? Well, you know, Lori, Northeastern Republicans are different than the National Republican sure. Party. And I think that's the biggest challenge we have. I don't necessarily look at it as a woman versus a man thing. I look at it as we are a more moderate party. And, and just getting all of us who get elected time after time out there to spread that word so people understand that that's not what it's about. I guess what concerns me is that, you know, we're worrying about people losing their homes, taking their kids out of school, you know, not having a car to drive, yet somehow this whole thing has been defined on social issues and not that those aren't important I mean you know I'm a Connecticut Republican pro-choice woman and I don't you know I don't agree with that particular part of our national platform that doesn't mean I don't believe in generally what the Republican Party stands for and I think it gets lost in the weeds and that we've allowed the Democrats to define us in that way and I don't think that that's right. Well I remember uh, Linda McMahon in particular had a, a, a big problem in her debates with uh, Chris Murphy. He was always uh, projecting or trying to project the idea that she was uh, against uh, a woman's right to choose uh, and uh, and you know, and and that uh, she said was not the case at all. I I am, uh, you know, pro-choice through the campaign, but it was hard to get apparently hard to get voters to believe that when they see the images of the national party. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the problem? It, it it is the problem, but I also think that, and I've said this time and time again, if people take five minutes a week to look online and find their representative and their senators and their congressmen's voting record which we can find all of our voting records online, they'll see how we vote and they'll see what we believe in. And that's how you vote for people, based on you know, what they actually do, not what they say during campaign time or what you may read. I mean, it's not the perception, it's the reality. And that's how you can find out, because we have, you know, we have all that out in the open and readily for people to get. But maybe you should have some sort of like a PR campaign to really distinguish that for Connecticut voters, right? Well, I think it's important that Connecticut voters know how we, how we think. And I, I do, I agree with Themis, that the, the vast majority of folks in Connecticut do think a little differently than some of our friends in the middle of the country. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not only, it, it really doesn't matter what you think personally, it's a question of do you think it's the government's business to be involved in these things. So most of the time, they don't even come up in our discussions right. in the legislature, because our issues are you know, turning the economy around, making sure that we have free markets and that people can get ahead and that businesses can grow here and that we have good education and, and a sound fiscal situation. Well, the other uh, image problem, I, I think, uh, for the Republicans is uh, the fact that I, uh, I believe many people think that the Republican Party is all for the rich people and the business people and the Democrats are more for the, the average working person. And, uh, you know, that's the way a lot of people look at the party. How does the party combat that? I mean, I know the uh, fiscal issues are important, uh, being conservative, uh, you know, lower taxes and lower spending. Uh, I, I get all that. I think most people do. They, want, they don't want to spend any more taxes than they have to. They don't want to have to pay more taxes. But uh, still, it's like, well, you're going to cut this program and that program that, that I need or my loved ones need and that sort of thing. And so you, you're looked at as like the enemy, I think. Well, you know, we talk about business, and I, I think that's a misnomer in a lot of ways because a large majority of businesses are small businesses with people that have, you know, 10 employees or less. So that's your next-door neighbor. That's you. That's mm -hmm. somebody, you know, your, your daughter, your 
your son. That's what drives this economy. And we talk about jobs bills when we get into the legislature. The legislature can't create jobs. Government doesn't create jobs. Businesses create jobs. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about business, we're not talking about the IBMs of the world. We're not yeah. talking about Apple. We're talking about the mom and pop down the street that we all know that, you know, goes in there and works 80 hours a week just to make ends meet and pay payroll. That's what the business, that, you know, that's what we talk about because that's what drives this economy. And that's what we, you know, that's what we support and that's what we fight for every day. Tell us what you think the budget battle, how would you characterize what it's going to be like? <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> we're 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 in a situation That's a, now a where a billion dollars you got to make yeah. up well, somehow. Well, and over right? over two years, uh, the the projection yeah, right now is two point two, and, two, and, two and, a half, yeah. and probably more because the revenues this year continue to fall short. And last last uh, last budget season, there was the largest tax increase in the state's history. So it's it's hard uh, to imagine that any voters out there would like to see taxes raised again and uh, that's, oh, yeah. I mean that's Bring that's ridiculous yeah. and and then on top of that yeah. uh, the union deals uh, with the state the, the, employees the savings we were supposed to get from the state employees that avenue is closed off unless we reopen the contracts which leaves spending cuts so I think that reopening the wow. contracts should not be off but the a table. billion dollars you can't do it all in spending cuts right or well, can you a lot of that money is tied up in state employee compensation and benefits well you know I mean first of all you have as Gail mentioned you have the largest tax increase in the state of Connecticut's history you have the largest budget in the state of Connecticut's history you have the largest unemployment in the state of Connecticut's history and after all that that was to solve the problem okay we clearly knew that wasn't going to solve the problem so going forward the largest part of the budget is a state employee union contracts and the governor when he negotiated two years ago he tied our hands for four years we can't open that up unless the unions decide they want to I mean how do you just cut off the legs of the whole legislature in negotiating that kind of thing you can't so you know we have our hands tied here our hands tied there you know, you have to make the tough decisions. I mean, this isn't an easy job. You can't go out and borrow it. It's an, no, because no, we have the highest, the highest too, borrowing this, you know, in the country, too. So yeah. you have to, you know, we like to say in, in the House Republicans that we have a common sense agenda. Spend no more than you make. Borrow no more than you can afford to pay back. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The more government does, the less it does well. And we should have all the government we need and only the government we need. Those are things we learn from our parents and our grandparents mm -hmm. that we all do every day in our homes. And when government learns to operate that way, we'll all be in a better situation. Well, I think, uh, oh, by the way, I want to ask you, what do you think about this uh, thing about having women on the front line in combat? Federal thing, the Defense Department thing. I'm just curious what you think of that. I don't have any problem with that. I don't know if they want to be there. Right. You don't force them, but I guess if they want to be there. Oh, okay. I kind of thought you would say that. I mean, I think they should. I mean, we want equality, so we should be in the same yeah. situation as everybody else. Should be available. So you're good with that. All right. Thanks to both of you Final for being here. We're going to be you. watching you. Thanks over for having us. Thank Thanks. you.